Uh, greetings, everyone. We continue to discuss the white paper on uh, migration as presented by the Minister of Home Affairs, Dr. Aaron Mtualeti. Uh, the paper recommends that uh, the government of the Republic of South Africa must review and or withdraw from the 1951 convention and the 1967 protocol with a view to access to them with the reservations like other countries. Uh, if you read this white paper, it quotes a number of countries that expressed the reservations on the <coughs> 1951 convention and the 1967 protocol. Uh, the paper further uh, uh, recommends that the re refugee protection and immigration legislation must provide for reservations and exemptions as contained in the 1951 convention. Um, and, and then uh, it goes on to talk about cessation of refugee status. Uh, I will read this part. It says, uh, in, countries where the, in countries where the political situation has improved, and the fear of persecution no longer exists, the Department of Home Affairs should, in collaboration with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and Ambassadors Concerned, to repatriate refugees to their countries of origin. Legislative intervention should be developed to deal with issues of voluntary and involuntary repatriation. The termination of refugee status should be done in compliance with the relevant provisions of PAJA in the Constitution. Countries such as Botswana has repatriated refugees from Namibia and Zimbabwe back to their countries of origin. This was done in collaboration with the UNHCR. The repatriation process was challenged and unsuccessful up to the appeal court in Botswana. In any event, Section 5, Bracket 1 of the Refugees Act provides for cessation of refugee status where change of circumstances related to the grounds for recognition had occurred. Uh, I know that um, <clears throat> there are Zimbabweans that are on refugee status, uh, but some of them after 2017, uh, when uh, Robert Mugabe resigned as president and the new administration came in, led by Emerson Mnangagwa, they returned back to Zimbabwe, but there are others that uh, uh, are still uh, holders of a refugee status in South Africa. And of course, there are many other um, migrants from different countries across the world who are refugees in South Africa. <coughs> then uh, the policy framework proposals uh, which has been proposed by uh, this uh, white paper on refugee protection. It says, the new policy framework must provide for exemptions as envisaged in the 1969 OAU Convention. I'm sure we discussed the 1969 OAU Convention. Given the magnitude of the practical difficulties outlined above, the Refugees Act must be repealed in its entirety and be included in a single legislation dealing with the citizenship, immigration, and refugee protection. The new legislation must include the best international practices in dealing with the refugee protection. There must be suitable qualified persons and structures uh, to deal with the refugee protection. Uh, the point that is of interest, which appeared in the white paper on international migration, uh, which was gazetted in 2017, which previously we discussed. It says the refugee reception offices must be located at ports of entry to facilitate immediate assessment of asylum claims. Uh, and why, why, why is this paper at this stage where we are does not give detail? Uh, but the 19, 2017 white paper uh, yet suggested a similar approach to put uh, <clears throat> these refugee facilities or centers near the port of entry, where it explained that uh, when you come through the facilitation center, your application is processed. If your Aslam seeker claim is deemed unfounded, you are immediately returned back to your country of origin because you are at the port of entry. Uh, but if uh, 
they found that there is evidence that uh, if you return to your country of origin, you might be harmed, arrested, persecuted, and so forth. Uh, you would allowed be to move within the rest of the uh, country in South Africa. Uh, and it says here the further policy framework proposals regarding refugee protection will be dealt uh, uh, in this document. We have, we have not gone there, uh, but we are going to continue discussing. Uh, so I want to hear your views on this, uh, because like we said, that most of the paper speaks to uh, people that are Islam seekers, uh, uh, refuge, uh, seeking refuge in South Africa. Uh, the paper at this stage does not deal like what the white paper in 2017 did, recognizing economic migrants. Uh, it's important <coughs> uh, to, to understand the two. Uh, you have economic migrants, mainly people of low skill, that come to South Africa, which the White Paper on International Migration Gazette in 2017 captures it so well and it makes proposals on how to deal with economic migrants. But where we are at this stage, uh, this paper does not give clarity on economic migrants. It speaks more on uh, refugees uh, or Islam seekers as per the Refugee Act uh, in terms of defining who is a refugee who qualifies to seek an Islam. Uh, it does not at this stage talk about uh, people of low skill that are from neighboring countries. Uh, but you have been reading this paper. Let's hear your views, uh, write in your comments. I saw one comment uh, 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 where some were suggesting that uh, <coughs> uh, why are we discussing uh, this? Uh, it's important that uh, uh, migrants must know the migration laws in South Africa is critical. Uh, that a person wishing to visit South Africa or whether they are coming in to claim Islam, they should know the laws so that when they come through, they know what is expected of them. But please write in the comment section, I am Ngavuto Nicholas Mabena. Like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you are on TikTok, please do follow us. Goodbye.